Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello, beautiful soul family, and welcome to Weekly Wisdom and Insights, your home for spiritually guided transformation and empowerment. I am your host, Dear James, and together with the Unseen, Spirit, Source, and Symphony, we look at the current energies, the intuitive wisdom and insights, and we go as guided. And this episode is a continuation, if you will, of last week's episode, all about the Aries full moon, um, super moon, energies, and so forth and that Cardinal Grand Cross that was going on and so forth. So there was too much to pack into one episode. So we're continuing where we left off. So let's just jump in because there is so much to get to. And just to start off our main energies, um, it's a 10 month, all month long. So it's about treading cautious advance that we are moving forward. And you'll see how this is playing with our main theme, all about consciousness and awareness and so forth. Um, it's the 23rd, so we have split apart, regenerate. So we are continuing to split apart from the past. And that, of course, has to do with Pluto back in Capricorn. It's now moving direct. It's this final time. It will not be in Capricorn again in our lifetimes. And it is moving into Aquarius first time since the French, American, and Industrial Revolutions. So big energies, big changes. Um, it's an eight year all year long. So it's about uniting from the inside out. Um, it's 14 great possessing shine. because We're meant to possess this great possessing. Everything that's within us is meant to come through in the most pure, authentic manner and to shine our light. And it culminates in a five, which is nourished while waiting patience. And so it's to know that we have everything that we're nourished while we're waiting and to, Seek patience, practice patience. It is certainly a fun one. Patience, oof, not always wonderful and great. Not easy to do all the time. Welcome, Alicia. And so let's move right into our astro influences, our astrological influences. So on the 9th of October, Jupiter stationed retrograde. Two days later, Pluto stations direct. On the 17th, we have the full moon in Aries, it's with the, uh, the Cardinal Grand Cross. On the 22nd, yesterday, we have the Sun square Pluto, both at 29 degrees, this anoretic degree. It's a very powerful degree. Welcome, Colleen. And on November 3rd, uh, coming up, and you'll see how the full moon in Aries is bookending the energies that will happen on November 3rd, which is this Mars-Pluto opposition. Again, it 29 degrees, that powerful anoretic degree. And 29, welcome, Deborah. Um, and a shout out to Deborah. It was her birthday yesterday, so happy birthday, Deborah. Um, so we see these big changes because of the 29 degrees and these astrological influences. The energy surrounding them is hidden no longer. We had this last week, so hidden no longer, a crescendo of change. And so remember that that hidden no longer was about either you're not hidden any longer, you come up and out and 
there's more public presence and so forth, or what's been hidden is hidden no longer. And then this a crescendo of change. And how that, and it's number four um, with from the unseen. And what they said was avalanche of change. And so there was both this crescendo of change, but avalanche of change. And so an avalanche, a sudden arrival or occurrence of something in overwhelming qual- uh, quantities and, and or undergo a rapid increase in conductivity. That's from physics. So we can see how this avalanche of change in its four is the fact that it can literally be a sudden arrival or occurrence of something in overwhelming quantities, which can be positive, again, positive or negative, depending on how we're emitting, what we're putting out, and or this undergo a rapid increase in conductivity, conductivity, electricity, magnetics, and so forth. Crescendo is the highest point reached in a progressive increase of intensity. So we've been building to this moment, to this this handoff, you know, it's the, the unseen is showing me the relay race where we're moving from Piscean to Aquarian, patriarchal to matriarchal. So the highest point reached in a progressive increase of intensity. These are some of the energies that we're working with at this 29th, at these various 29 degrees. So let's move into main themes. So we have heightened awareness. We're, last week we were dealing with wolf medicine. This week we are dealing with owl medicine. And how heightened awareness in owl medicine is a guiding light. The Aries full supermoon, the cardinal grand cross, the sun square Pluto, and this upcoming Mars Pluto opposition. What we're going to stay focused on, we're using the astrology um, to guide us, kind of as, as the roadmap, if you will. With the unseen then overlaying all of this um, celestial information from the unseen, what we don't see. So we see what we see, right? I mean, and this is where heightened awareness, owl medicine is about what we don't see or seeing in the dark. And so it's about, and so seeing from the inside, our intuition, our inner knowing, and utilizing that in this time of crescendo and avalanche of change heightened awareness. So here's our main theme. Heightened awareness, owl medicine, a guiding light. And we're going to start with Pam Youngen's North Point Journal and then move into owl medicine and then go to Astrology by Lauren and wrap all of it with the unseen spirit source and symphony guiding us. Um, So let's just jump in because heightened awareness and we'll see how the astrology is playing. Welcome, Sue. So Pam Youngen's North Point Journal, she says, we are in a transitional period that is reshaping us individually and collectively. Old forms began to crumble five years ago when a new solar cycle began and solar and Pluto aligned. Now, as Pluto nears the end of its 16-year transit of Capricorn, there is a crescendo of change, a completion of a process that truly began in 2008 when Pluto entered the sign. So remember, Pluto enters the sign in 2008 in Capricorn. It was in 2008, it was you know closest to the, the, the Great Recession and so forth, and institutions, banks failing, the, the housing market, all things that are tangible, Capricorn, Earth. And so here we've been, we're completing this 16-year cycle. We are starting, Pam goes on to say, we are starting to see the cumulative effects of so many endings. As we individually review all that has changed in recent years, it is clear that our old identity, pre-2020, no longer fits. The goals and the roles that we previously claimed have either slowly or at times abruptly fallen away. In some ways, we are eager for the new, and yet the unknown that lies before us, while intriguing, may also be unnerving in its vastness. And so again, all of this time, everything that who we've been pre-2020, the masks, the identities, the labels, the roles, all of these things, they're changing because we're changing because the world is changing. The celestial world is changing. 
we are leaving a 2000 plus year, uh, you know, um, age era and moving into a completely new one. And so what worked before in the past no longer works. We are not who we once were. And we will not be the same person that we're going to be in, in you know, the coming years continuously or forever. We're, the one constant is change. Pam goes on to talk about from full moon to Mars Pluto. So the full moon October on October 17th was a powerful one that drew upon the energies of transformational Pluto and dynamic Mars to augment its effects. That lunation was one bookend of a four-week period that will prove to be life-changing for many. The other bookend on this time is the Mars-Pluto opposition that perfects on November 3rd. Welcome, Brigitte. We can consider these weeks from mid-October to mid-November to be very Plutonian in nature. Some will be drawn deeply inward during this time, seeking a more complete and understanding of their own psyche. We are compelled to become better acquainted with the truth of our being, to discover our inner source of power. Remember from last week, truth is coming at us like a freight train, and there is no looking away. So again, the more proactive we are about looking inside, about dealing with our shadow, or dealing with the things that are coming up that we're meant to release, we're meant to cleanse our vessel, empty our vessel to make space for the new. Since external indicators of who we thought we were have fallen away, now we seek a deeper identification with our soul and its path and purpose. So again, everything, everything's purposeful. So everything leading up to 2020, everything that we've been and we've experienced everything, it's all purposeful. But now as those experiences and images of ourself and our experiences and so forth fall away, as Pam Young is saying, we now seek a deeper identification of our soul with our soul and its path and purpose. What did my soul say it would do in this lifetime, in this incarnation? That should be the driving question, the leading question, the go-to question. What did my soul say it would do? And then align ego, mind, personality, action with that purpose, that quote unquote, haha, soul purpose, S-O-U-L, S-O-L-E. So here, Pam continues. However, some will seek power externally during this Plutonian time. The struggle to reclaim a disintegrating identity and the fear of opening to the new are being projected onto the world stage. These are the underlining reasons for the battles manifesting in the outside world. And remember, this is that train. I'm just bringing up the image. This is that end of the line hanging on by a thread. So some will seek to use this Plutonian energy in its, from its shadow. They're trying to claim or reclaim a disintegrating identity. But that time has come and gone. We, we've been there, done that. And so it, it's the train that ends. It's the train that goes nowhere. That doesn't mean they won't try to use this Plutonian energy it for that purpose to that end. However, the positive, the higher octave of the Plutonian energy is to reveal the guck, the goo, what's been hidden from the light, to transmute it, transcend it, so that we advance, we evolve, and move forward. Pam Youngins continues, Sun and Scorpio, we are assisted in this process of self-discovery by the sun's ingress into perceptive Scorpio this Tuesday. That was yesterday. Scorpio is a very complex and somewhat en enigmatic sign. This is reflected in the fact that it is the only sign of the zodiac that has more than one animal symbol. All signs have both a higher vibrational and a lower frequency manifestation, and we are always given the choice of which end of the spectrum to embody. See, we have a choice. Choose the higher octave. Choose to reach higher. Yes, it will require more of us per se, until it doesn't, until it becomes second nature. With Scorpio, our options are clearly represented by its two main symbols, the scorpion and the eagle. Both of these creatures are powerful and intense, but, in, but each in a different way. The scorpion is known for its resilience and its capacity to defend itself. 
It lives in darkness, hiding under rocks or in burrows. Its virtues, when taken to an unhealthy extreme, manifest as being overly guarded, suspicious, manipulative, and vengeful. We can see this playing out on the world stage. The stinger on the scorpion, which is used for protection and also to hunt, contains a poisonous venom. This represents the toxic nature of holding on to anger and resentment. When we hold on, everything is energy. When we bottle up and hold negative energy, any energy, but especially negative energy, it creates dis-ease, disease, disease. And so it's toxic. And so this is highlighting, the Scorpio season is highlighting. Are we releasing the toxicity? Are we moving beyond it? Are we allowing the energy to flow through us just effortlessly so that we don't hang on to negative aspects? Because remember, negativity in its energetic form is simply an opportunity. It's presenting us in in a challenged state something to overcome, transcend, to see within ourselves so that we will release it. What does that do? It empties the vessel. Ah, we can breathe. We're lighter. We feel better about ourselves and what's happening. Hang on to it. It festers. It gets louder and darker. And you'll see how that is a part of owl medicine coming up in just a second. The eagle nests high in the trees and is known for its clear vision. As it soars above the landscape, it sees the darkness, the shadows in which the scorpion lives. But it also sees and is drawn upward to the light. The eagle represents the ability to rise above obstacles, to be free of attachments, and to gain spiritual enlightenment. And the owl is, in essence, the counterpart to the eagle because the owl has such all-seeing ability in darkness. It's it's their equivalent, the owl and the eagle. A third animal symbol commonly associated with Scorpio is the phoenix. This creature, which bursts into flames and is reborn from the ashes, represents the transformational process of death and rebirth that is part of the Scorpio experience. So as we end, and, and again, individually, So whether it's an individual person, a business, an institution, a government, us as a collective whole, this Scorpio season represents the death and rebirth of these um, shadow Plutonian energies that are coming up to the light to be transmuted. At the same time, that Plutonian energy is bringing in and advancing us forward and advancing us into the Aquarian age, which again, it hasn't been there in 246, 47 years. And when it was there last, all of this advance, all of this growth, all of this expansion, that's what's on offer for us. Pam Youngins concludes, as the sun transits the sign of Scorpio, From October 22nd to November 21st, we likewise are experiencing a death and rebirth. Our tasks during this time are to maintain the higher perspective of eagle, to use the tenacity of scorpion to stay aligned with our inner truth, and to let go of attachment to the old forms so that the new may be birthed. It is not about clinging to the edge of that train that's going nowhere, that's coming, that's ending. It's about the letting go of the old forms so that we're rebirthed. It is especially appropriate that we are working with the effects of the Mars-Pluto opposition while the sun is in Scorpio. These two planets are the co-rulers of Scorpio due to its embodying its traits of intensity and willfulness, courage, and passion. And you'll see how courage is playing a role here in a second. So we're setting the stage for these energies. Now let's move into owl medicine. And this is where, and this is by Jess Hagen with Urban Healers of LA.com, uh, her spiritual animal blog. The owl spirit animal totem teaches how to listen for the truth and not be deceived. Remember, the truth is coming at us like a freight train. We are not able to turn away. We are, and we don't want to. We want to see the truth within ourselves within the whole of the whole, within our world experience, 
so that we deal with it. We transmute it. We become higher, better, more pure. The owl is a living radio telescope with sonic discs surrounding the eyes made of feathers that funnel the slightest of sounds directly into her high-range ears. Unlike most birds of prey, the owl's satellite dish eyes are forward-facing and extra-large for her head size, giving her binocular vision. One ear is situated higher than the other. This auditory asymmetry, along with the ability to pivot the neck 220 degrees, allows the owl to pinpoint the exact location of a sound without ever moving her body. There's a heightened awareness. There is a connectivity. Remember, the owl has a piercing vision in pitch blackness and darkness. And she can do all of this without moving her body. By turning her head until the sound is heard in both ears, Al then knows she is staring straight at the origin of the sound, meaning her prey. Once accurately positioned, her large nocturnal eyes are then able to locate a tiny object in pitch darkness with minimal use of energy. Her flight feathers are fringed with a second layer of fur, making her gliding approach completely silent. Her fierce vision and hearing, along with her silent cloak of feathers and razor talons, make Al a master night hunter. She's using all of her God-given attributes, talents, her being, her essence, to both protect, hunt, preserve, and she's doing it effortlessly. I am. There's not craziness. She's not a cuckoo bird. She's not running amok. (laughs) She's not in her head, so to speak. She's in her essence, her being, her beingness. Jess Hagen goes on to say, her medicine speaks of struggles after the sun has set, remedies for sleeplessness and overcoming superstitions of darkness. When the owl spirit animal totem is hovering in your life, Your powers of observation are pitch perfect, and you cannot be deceived by others. Messages and information are assessed with flawless precision, and action is taken in a discreet and effective manner. And the reason we're dealing with wolf medicine, owl medicine, and next week, deer medicine, is from the unseen. With these bookends, the October 17th full supermoon in Aries, and then the upcoming Mars-Pluto opposition, The unseen said to me, wolf medicine, owl medicine, deer medicine, and how we utilize these three spirit totems congruently, collectively, together, especially for this time and arcing out into April of next year. Um, Owl medicine teaches how to identify and stop people who seek to take energy away from you. Owl knows that power is not ours to keep. Power is only to be used for a brief time as it flows through our life situations before moving on in its mysterious current. See, it's about energy. So Owl Medicine teaches us how to identify, how to be alert and identify a heightened awareness, a guiding light. And yet she knows, Owl Medicine knows, that we are not to stop energy to harness it in a negative or try to hold on to it, but it's not ours to do so. It is what moves through us. So when we allow the energy to consistently move through us, we're in harmony, we're in balance, we're healthy. Jess goes on to continue, uh, the night medicine of Al has a powerful and conflicting uh, grip on the human psyche which whispers lessons of confronting fears and protecting personal power. The meaning of her symbol varies from culture to culture and has been immersed in superstition for centuries. Ancient Greek mythology found her to be wise. Ancient Hebrew mythology found her to be courageous. The Pawnee view the owl to be a symbol of protection, while the Ojibwa and Pueblo view her to, to symbolize death, this death and rebirth. But all the myths of Owl speak of clairvoyance, astral projection, and magic. So it's talking about higher connectivity, our soul source connection. 
our intuition and how we harness that magic, that, that channel, that connectivity to our greatest benefit. Magic is chemistry and physics beyond our human ability to explain via scientific method. Once a phenomenon is identified either with technology or math, it ceases to be considered magic and becomes common knowledge. So it's, in essence, the known versus the unknown, or the seen versus the unseen. The ability to locate and identify remote, elusive information is the medicine of this night bird. The notion that Al is an agent of misfortune or an ill omen is a fear-based superstition that should be questioned with Al's own rigorous medicine to tear away at limiting beliefs. There are no bad animals in nature. When we demonize or turn another living being into an enemy to be wary of, we are in fact cloaking our primal fears of instability. See, when we demonize our fellow human, do unto others as you would have done to you, we're doing it to ourselves. And what it's doing when we do that is masking or attempting to mask what's actually happening within ourselves. And so we, our instability, our fears. And so we demonize our fellow humans. Or in her example with Al Medicine, when we demonize animals. But all of us are pure. That is who we are at our center, at our, at our beingness, is pure. Jess goes on to say, instability is the truest nature of all things, as all things fall apart. Acknowledging our fear of being attacked allows us to, like Al, pinpoint and handle any potential threat with effortless accuracy. It's about piercing the illusion. It's about seeing through what's on the surface and realizing that somewhere in there, fear, instability, change is playing a message, a loud message for us, certainly in this moment. We must let go of, uh, we must let the demons of our fears in so that we can connect with the God beyond them. That is such a powerful statement. We must let the demons of our fears in so that we can connect with the God beyond them. It's about piercing the illusion. It's about moving through the fear, the anxiety, the instability, the change, so that we we walk through the fire, the phoenix, we walk through the fire to get to the other side, to see what's, what's really truly on offer. And when we do that, we will always see that something greater, more pure, better, higher, deeper, is on offer when we do that. If we try to hide from the rather inconvenient voice of tears, rage, and pain that swell up from within us, those very voices will swoop down, godlike, and consume us, forcing inevitable communion. It's when we allow that shadow energy to immobilize us, when we stay in dis ease, when we double and triple and quadruple down on it, it amplifies, it magnifies, it grows. But when we simply, ah, I see you, it neutralizes. It's okay. It's okay, ego, mind, personality. It's okay. Okay, soul. What did my soul say it would do? What is this really? And we get to the God beyond. We get to the purity. We get to the light, purity of it. Seemingly unfounded attacks of emotions are, in truth, an opportunity to evolve out of our limited understanding of self that keeps us afraid. Owls, I love this part. This is very interesting. Owls consume their prey whole, bones, fur, and all. She then generates a pellet of indigestible material, which is coughed up and released. Her medicine shows that when we trust the natural process of adventure and accept a challenge directly, the inessential will fall away and need not be fretted over. See, we don't get call, caught up in the, in the craziness of it or the fear of it or the anxiety of it because we know that what's happening when we face it head on, truth is coming at us head on. When we accept it, the inessential 
as Jess is saying, will fall away. It need not be fretted over. It just goes away because it was never the moral of the story. It was simply, you know, the prop, the set dressing that allowed us to see it or experience it. But what's on the other side? Purity, greatness, goodness, light. Jess Hagen goes on to say, unlike Hawk or Eagle medicine, Owl medicine emphasizes the neutrality of life on earth, giving people the objective space to learn painful lessons through misadventures and egoic pursuits. So we can learn it in the cloak of opposites. We can learn it through, quote, challenge. The challenge is really opportunity. Owl's neutrality asks that we develop foresight in our actions and to use the neutral zone of earth to reduce confusion and suffering. Everything is divine and neutral. So Al's neutrality, see, it's all divine and neutral. It's seen through the darkness so that we see, like eagle, the light. We can see it all. We see more with greater clarity, heightened awareness, a guiding light. The political message, oh, wait a minute, sorry. Um, If your actions have taken power away from another being in some way, Be assured that the same power will one day be taken from you. That is Al's law of neutrality. This law of neutrality, karma. Karma is simply balance. It's evening out the scales. And so again, if we've done something where this is happening, then do unto others as you would have done to you. It'll boomerang back. It'll come back. The political message of the owl spirit animal totem can be seen in her ability to hunt skunks. Due to her reduced sense of smell, owl is one of the rare predators of this smelly creature. Skunk medicine, when out of balance, often involves a lot of unnecessary hype and posturing, which owl sees right through. Her medicine reminds you to be ever aware of people who wish to trick you and use you as a resource for personal gain. We are seeing this playing out on the world stage, multiple world leaders, institutions, and so forth, looking to use, to present unnecessary hype and posturing because they want to use you for personal gain. So we can see this in the greater whole of the whole, and we can experience it on our individual relationships and so forth. But the owl sees right through it. Owl medicine perceives any attempts at deception with a hunter's vigilance. If out of balance, Al is asking you what it is you have allowed yourself to be deceived by and why. It will always be an inside job. It's number eight, uniting, unite. We are in 23, splitting apart. So when we're being deceived, it's because we're allowing it. We're not listening to our soul source connection, our inner knowing. And so when we're out of balance, Al Medicine is asking us to, why are we allowing ourselves to be deceived? And this is part of the truth that's coming at us that we can't turn away from. Use your common sense to home in on the ill intent that someone may have aimed at you. Addressing manipulation head on rather than living in shy tolerance of abuse will not only heal you, but it will also heal the world. As Al reminds us, we are not part of the world, we are the world. We are as inseparable from our environment as Al is to her feathers. Whatever, uh, whatever you accomplish, the world accomplishes, because we're all one, uniting, united. So again, as we, every, everything's energy, everything that ripples out is reverberating. It's, it's constantly in motion. Our first responsibility is to to dissolve the feelings of fear and separation within our inner life, which compel us to attack our environment, an external aspect of our own self. We must pierce through the illusion. When we pierce through the illusion, we see what's operating or happening within ourselves, and then we don't attack our neighbors. We don't attack our fellow humans, because ultimately what we're frightened of or fearing is within us. It's not them. It's something, it's a story, a script, a label, an identity, an experience that we're clinging to and hanging on to. We're not transcending it. And thus we get stuck 
in dis-ease. And, and it breaks down the harmony of the energy flowing and the, the reciprocity of purity and goodness coming back to us. It breaks down. Addressing our personal inner state will change outward reality. Al's eyes burn bright yellow in the night, bringing the light of day into the dark of night. There is even, in the darkest of hours, a way to listen and locate the tiny stirrings of movement that will lead us out of any impasse. So this is the power of Al medicine, and it reminds me of the Two of Swords in the tarot. And the two of swords, um, there's a woman depicted on the card. She's facing away from the water. The water is emotion, inner knowing, intuitiveness. There's the crescent moon. She's blindfolded, and she has two swords that are crisscrossed before her. The meaning of the two of swords is that we must go inwardly. Like the owl, we must use the senses, our internal knowing, our soul source connection. To discern fact, truth, so that we know which direction to go. Because again, it's about heightened awareness. It's about clarity. It's owl medicine, a guiding light. And number one from the unseen this week is the importance of being earnest. And of course, this is a play, very famous play from Oscar Wilde um, that premiered at the St. James Theater in London on Valentine's Day, love. But earnest means showing sincere and intense conviction. In order to do that, in order for it to not be false, we must close our eyes and go within to discern the truth, not a truth, and certainly not It's our key word this week, ignorance. It is not about using and utilizing ignorance. Ignorance, lack of knowledge, education, information, understanding, or awareness. Destitute of knowledge. One could say destitute of wisdom. So our medicine is the antithesis of ignorance. Al medicine medicine is about inner light, inner vision, inner truth, the truth, and how we utilize everything within ourselves to overcome any illusion, any shadow, any challenge, any ignorance. So this the importance of being earnest, it's about showing sincere and intense conviction. But sincere and intense conviction with wisdom, with knowledge, with truth. And again, not a truth, and certainly not a quote unquote ego mind personality truth. That's, those can be what we utilize to protect or defend or, you know, root in versus what's really on offer. What's really happening. And again, what's the truth, not a truth. So now we move to um, astrology by Lauren. And she begins, growth is painful. Change is painful. This is a quote by N.R. Narayana Murthy. So growth is painful. Change is painful. But nothing is as painful as staying stuck where you do not belong. See, when when we become stuck and stagnant and stubborn, the energy ceases to move. Think of this in terms of water. Would you wish to consume stagnant water? Or do you want, quote unquote, living waters? waters that are fresh, that can be consumed, that nourish us. It's the same with energy. So nothing is as painful as as staying stuck where you do not belong, where we do not belong. We don't belong in the past. We, We are created 
to advance, to move forward, to evolve. Lauren goes on. On October 12th, Pluto station direct. Now, 10 days later, the sun at 29 degrees Libra, it makes a square, a, a, a harsh aspect, because squares are energy that needs to be released. Um, so Libra makes a square to Pluto, also in the anoretic last degree of Capricorn. This happens every time that Pluto stations or appears to stand still and is indicative of an adjustment in the planetary cycle, which also is a time for us to adjust to this direct phase of Pluto. Because Pluto is in this very last degree of the sign of Capricorn, never to return again in our lifetimes, it carries so much more weight and meaning both collectively and individually. So again, dig deep, look into your individual lives and at the world stage to see where are we being shaken loose? Where is who we were before? Are we being challenged or given the opportunity to proactively release it, see it, so that we make space for the new? As mentioned before, as Pluto stations this month, it does so with a semi-square to Saturn in Pisces. So as the sun perfects its square to Pluto on the 22nd, it also makes what's called a sesquiquadrate to Saturn on the 21st, shining a light on this minor but potentially troublesome transit, which actually began back in January 2020 when the current Saturn-Pluto cycle began. And so remember too, it's important astrologically, as above, so below. So the heavens for time immemorial, The heavens, the stars, the planets have been the celestial stage speaking to us, speaking wisdom and knowledge about the progression of humanity, our experience here on Earth. Saturn-Pluto cycles, which last about 33 to 38 years, can at first feel like destruction, imminent danger, and fear of annihilation. But what arises out of that is a determination to survive, grow, and evolve from who we once were, better and stronger than we were before. It's not about staying who we were in our entire lives. And we know this to be true because, again, the 5-year-old is not the 12-year-old, is not the 20-year-old, is not the 90-year-old. They are different individuals because of their collective journey. So the 90-year-old while they may be youthful and childlike, is not the five-year-old. There's a continuum. That's the point here. What happens, hopefully, is that as we um, journey, as we experience, as we quote-unquote age, we're honed and polished and refined. We become more than we were before. Or perhaps the human becomes more aware of who their soul always was. It's the opportunity to be our highest octave of self, which is the soul. So the human becomes aware of the opportunity to live that, mirror that, experience that, instead of fighting against it or fearing it or feeling separated from it. The metaphor for destruction and imminent danger was certainly true when this current cycle began in early 2020. The opening semi-square between Saturn and Pluto, which we are experiencing now, is the next phase of this cycle. Similar to the crescent moon phase of the lunar cycle each month, this is when our metal is being tested. In truth, it can seem with Saturn-Pluto aspects that what doesn't kill us will make us stronger. And that, of course, instantly had me Um, It's a Kelly Clarkson song, Stronger. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. It invoked that. Stronger in the sense of having greater agency over our own life and destiny. Heightened awareness. The only way to have a greater agency over our own life and destiny is to have a heightened awareness, a guiding light, owl medicine, wolf medicine. Which wolf am I feeding? To connect into our soul source connection and allow our soul to lead. That makes us stronger. That gives us greater agency over our own life and destiny. When we're operating from ego, mind, personality, it's an illusion. It's a complete illusion. And of course, it can crumble very quickly. 
because it's not built on solid ground. For the 16 years that Pluto has been in Capricorn, it has exposed the underlining faults and decaying structures in society and in our own lives. These can be our literal foundations, like the roads and highways, the government, governing parties and their leadership, or the foundations of a building. It can also be our relationships, how we see ourselves, our relationship with ourselves. Where have we been deceiving ourselves? And what's the actual truth? These include what were once considered time-honored traditions or monuments, but which now no longer represent who we are as a society or as an individual. We create our own personal foundations upon which we rely and depend on for our sense of identity and security. The labels, the identities, the masks, the scripts, the stories we tell ourselves to feel stable. But what if all of that is an illusion? And it's not what if. It is an illusion. So the more important moral and point is, who are you without all of that? And the only way you'll know the truth of that answer is when it's all stripped away and you listen to your soul and you say, oh, I'm still here. I'm still standing. Oh, oh, this is who I am. It's not what I drive or where I live or the occupation I perform. Those are all set dressing. It's rise of the guardians. It's who are you at your center. That's who you truly are. Um, They may have served. So these identities and so forth, they may have served a purpose at one time. Everything's purposeful. But when these become outmoded or irrelevant, or even decadent, it's time to create new and improved structures, systems, and foundations that are more sustainable and that allow us to continue to grow and evolve. Easiest example of this is relationships. When two people are in relation, and this can apply again with leadership and businesses and so forth, you know, when we continue to grow with one another, when we continue to choose to grow with one another, life continues to flourish and unfold. When we don't, when we are stuck, when we're stubborn, when we're saying we're never going to change, things die. It's just a simple, it's that simple. Jess goes on to say, it takes tremendous effort to change old habits and transform your life. This may even include a little pain and discomfort. But this process of change and transformation within our systems and structures of our lives is nothing less than the alchemical process of transforming lead into gold, rebuilding, rehabilitating, and rebirthing. And like a butterfly leaving its cocoon of safety and familiarity, it is time to say goodbye to that which we have outgrown and no longer serves us, to build better, more reliable structures that we can depend on far into the future. So it's a choice. These energies, this time, this heightened awareness, owl medicine, a guiding light, the wolf medicine, which wolf am I feeding? This moment in time is about the choice that we make. Are we choosing stagnant water? Are we choosing stagnant identity to be fixed, not fluid? Because we are moving into an era of air. So air denoting fluidity and the energies moving through us. Welcome, Olivia. Uh, Lauren goes on to say, what we are being asked to do with the semi-square is to move through the discomfort, the doubt, the futile sense of impossibility, the attachment, the attachment to a past that is no longer valid, and you know what's the uh, it's the uh, what's the definition of suffering? Attachment. When we're attached to something, it creates suffering because the energy becomes stagnant. It's not moving. It's not flowing, and we want it and need it to flow. So, the futile sense of impossibility, the attachment to a past that is no longer valid, and may in fact be holding us back. It may be painful and scary. Saturn Pluto transits have this way of pushing all our buttons. They dig deep down to the very quick, to the very source. 
And the only way we can do this is to face ourselves. It requires incredible humility and honesty to do this well. It can be painful, but it is necessary. That's what growing pains are all about. I want to just bring in the second thing from the unseen. They said, courageous and true. You step boldly forward into the light, into the limelight. So here's what's, you know, so incredible humility and honesty, but also courage. Courageous and true. You step boldly forward into the light, into the limelight. So again, remember, welcome, Ava. So remember this whole aspect about how we are, you know, no longer hidden and this crescendo moment and an avalanche moment or this crescendo of change and avalanche of change. There's this opportunity to to boldly step forward into light and some welcome Kiki and some will be stepping into the limelight. So stepping up, stepping out, stepping into the light is on offer. Um, just um, pardon me, uh, astrology by Lauren. Uh, she concludes one of the things that will become progressively more obvious after Pluto enters Aquarius in November is that we are being asked to not look back at what once was, but to gird our loins and to look forward with a world of possibility and what can be. So yes, is it? Can it be challenging? Can it be scary? Yes. And so, you know, this kind of like, but it's to not look back. It's to look forward. So as Astrology by Lauren, she's saying, you know, gird your loins, but look forward to the world of possibility of what can be. Be proactive. Do it with open arms. Allow the butterflies and, and, you know, the nervous energy, but proceed. Do it. Do it anyways, because you know it to be correct, true, and right for you. Um, We are in the process of closing out an era while giving birth to another. And she closes with a quote from Alexander Graham Bell. When one door closes, another opens. But we often look so long and so regretfully upon the closed door that we do not see the one, the new one opened before us. And they're showing me the image of where we stand in, you know, it's a prison. It's a square, a cell, a prison cell and the bars and and where we're standing inside of it, and yet the door is completely wide open. So do not fear stepping beyond the prison that we have created for ourselves individually and collectively. Just because it's, you know, it's again, it's the Israelites, you know, when they were let out of Egypt, and at some point, and, you know, God didn't guide them in a direct manner, in a direct route. He, she, they, the all that is guided them in a, in a zigzagging route to test their sincerity, their determination, their hope, their promise. And at one point, some of them did say, quote, we were better off with Pharaoh because it was enslaved. It's the beast I know. It's the prison I know. But that doesn't mean that it's the right or best thing for us. Just because it's the beast we know doesn't mean it's the beast we should continue with. And the beast, again, is an opportunity to see ourselves and transcend ourselves. Allow the energy to move through you, the force to move through you. Al medicine. I want to go to uh, our two quotes, and it's from uh, hexagram 14, which is great possessing, shine. And and this is from Carrie Hone at CafeOsol.com. Great possessing is formed when fire moves over heaven. The idea of mental clarity, Al medicine, heightened awareness. So mental clarity or the sun in the sky shows its auspiciousness in describing your current condition. It looks like a dumpster fire on the world stage, and yet what the unseen is guiding us to realize, to see, is this auspiciousness in describing our current condition. 
It's not doom and gloom unless we see it that way, unless we participate in that. But what's really on offer is this auspiciousness in advancing, in moving forward, in stepping out of the cell, out of the prison cell, out of the past. The sun sustains life, and when we rise like the sun, we need only activate our hidden powers of expansion. Like the sun, by simply being, we set off a chain reaction of abundance. Obstacles disappear because of the hidden influence of breakthrough. We cultivate the seeds planted in the dark of winter that break through the soil of difficulty and emerge stronger and wiser. This is great possessing. Perhaps we learn to play the guest of life and not strive so much to fight against what can never be. Where the underlining cause of union was a time of joining and partnerships, great possessing is a time when our star shines or our sun is rising as an individual. Courageous and true, you step boldly forward into the light, into the limelight. So whether it's the light or the limelight for us individually, collectively, you know, businesses, nations, and so forth, whole of the whole, that's up to us. We, we choose it. We participate. Um, life has offered us its greatest gift, the power to shine with an inner certainty that need not be defended. Strength and clarity unite, and you can move forward in the knowledge that grace is your teacher and power is merely aligning your will with the way. Remember, power, energy. Allow the currency of the unseen to move through you, to align you, to empower you, to expand you and to um, diminish and erode darkness, fear, shadow. Because again, we'll pierce the illusion. It's an illusion. It's still, the shadow is still an energy, a cloak of opposite. So it's coming in a form that might be more intense or heightened so that we'll not buy into the fear, but we'll harness the energy of fear to transcend, to leap forward. Um, Colleen is saying, I'm still so stressed out. Um, and Kiki is saying, I feel like the age of Aquarius will suit me. So, and how interesting, these <laughs> kind of two polarities, if you will. There is a lot of concern on the world stage. There's a lot of energy at this moment. There's a lot of um, anxiety, trepidation, fear of where it's all going. But remember, great possessing, shine. There's auspiciousness available to us. And so stay focused. Don't buy into the fear. Stay focused on the advance. Stay focused on the heightened awareness, the higher energy, the higher octave. Eagle, not scorpion. Phoenix, owl medicine, wolf medicine, which Wolf am I feeding? The one that wins is the one I feed. Um, the message, Carrie Hung goes on to say, the message can be about wealth, success, or just a sense of knowing you have arrived. And see, there's this sense of knowing we've arrived. We have arrived. God, are we in the thick of it? Yes. <laughs> and it's painful and it's scary. But it's only because it's the illusion of clinging to something that was versus embracing what is. And so, and again, we're moving forward. Pluto is moving forward. It's advancing into Aquarius. And the, the Mars-Pluto square, the sun squaring Pluto, all at the anoretic 29th degree, denoting endings and beginnings. Our first quote um, the character is firm, strong, ordered, and clear. The image of possession in great measure. So when we're firm, when our character is strong, we're standing on a solid foundation. So it's firm, it's strong, it's ordered, and it's clear. Heightened awareness, soul source connection. This is the image of possession in great measure. Anything less than that falls short. 
great possessing is the image of an inexhaustible source of energy that is available when you open yourself to nature's drive toward excellence. This is our second quote. The master said, do not play the host, but become the guest. When you can transcend your need for control, you can become the recipient of the subtle treasures that life has in store for you. And this beautiful image of, you know, in essence, like the adult hand, it's like the hand of God touching the infant downward and the light that the the energy and the expansion this inexhaustible source of energy that's available to us when we connect into it when we don't buy into the illusion a lesser um, energy if you will number three from the unseen with all of this said i heard um, it's a Whitney Houston song, and I started. You know, I heard the lyrics, "Heaven, hear me now," and then the the song is, "I look to you." So, with this quote that we just had, this inexhaustible source of energy, the unseen. It's number three. It's representing the Trinity. Um, you know, "Heaven, hear me now," and so it's it's like listen to your soul, align with your soul source connection. Heaven, hear me now. I look to you. And there was something about this, um, Whitney Houston, the etymology, Whitney means by or from the white island. White meaning pure. Houston means Hugh's town. The etymology of Hugh means heart, mind, spirit. So we're looking at this, heaven hear me now, I look to you. It was, it's going to require the purity of our being. It's going to require the purity of our heart, mind, and spirit, aligning, coming into union, unity, to advance. Again, a simple analogy. Anyone, imagine that we're driving cars on roadways and freeways and so forth in reverse. Can you imagine the chaos, the 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 pile ups? We don't go through life in reverse. We go through life forward, driving forward, big window screen in front of us, side mirrors and a rear view mirror, so that we can see what's on the side of us or behind us. We use the past as a as a vehicle. As a, as a means to navigate. But we clearly move forward. We drive moving forward with this expansive window screen in front of us, allowing us to see everything before us. That's the moral of these energies and of this moment in time and, this, and where those that are clinging to an old way, it's futile. It's an illusion. It will collapse under its own weight because it's meant to, because it's the past. It's not the present future. And so that's where, and this, I'm going to bring this up and we'll close out with this. You know, it's this beautiful image of 555, as if you're looking on on a clock, a digital clock, 555, and there's a feminine. Uh, a woman, a feminine, with the sun setting, this beautiful purple and oranges and reds and everything, and she's holding this billowy, beautiful piece of fabric. It's about change. It's about time. It's now. It is this moment in time. And that is where we are heading. And we close with number five. See, five, 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 number five. From the unseen, and it was it was one profound, pure, simple word. Peace. As we will see next week, dear medicine is about tranquility, forgiveness, and peace. And the only person we ever need forgive is ourselves. So this forgiveness 
starts within. Everything begins within. So forgiveness, but it's peace. And it's Dear Medicine setting us up for next week's show in this trilogy of Wolf Medicine, Owl Medicine, Deer Medicine. And these bookends, the Aries full supermoon that occurred on the 17th of October, and this upcoming Mars-Pluto opposition that's on the 3rd, and really in far greater aspect, what's occurring in this moment. So until next week, be well, be gentle, and kind with yourselves. Be proactive. Engage wolf medicine. Engage owl medicine. This heightened awareness, a guiding light. Because when we operate in this, and it's not in our ego mind personality, when we operate in our soul source connection, this higher octave, this heightened awareness, everything becomes clear. We can be courageous. We know the importance of being earnest. There's a crescendo and an avalanche. We step into the light or the limelight. And ultimately, we experience peace, fulfillment, joy. And that is what life is, is about. That is what it's about. It is not about doom and gloom and destruction. That's a choice. Peace is. Love is. I am. So until next week, be well. I love you all. Thank you for your presence and your comments and for being on this incredibly beautiful journey with myself and certainly with the Unseen Spirit Source and Symphony. Until next week, love you all.